Welcome to my channel. Today I will show you around my soap room and show you the way I like to organize things as well. So let's get started. At the entrance I have all products that are packed, labeled and ready to ship. I keep all products packages in see-through containers here as well. Here are some aluminum tins, candle making stuff over here. And down here are some other packaging as well as small tins for samplers. Glass dropper bottles for hair and beard oil. Aluminum tins and truffle boxes that I need to reorder as you can see. Down here are different types of gift boxes and here some shipping boxes as well as bubble mailers in different sizes and colors. Over here are the official Swiss post office shipping boxes. I like to keep such little baskets at hand when needed. Up here I keep my bigger molds like these slab molds from Brambleberry. The 5 pound mold with sliding bottom, some silicon loaf molds and some smaller wood molds with silicon liners as well. Here is the multi bar cutter, a single bar cutter, a soap beveler and a soap shaver. Down here I keep my backdrops for photographs, additional scales, guitar strings to replace the wires on the soap cutter, technical equipment like tripods, my gimbal and so forth, and a big container full of bags in different sizes for transport. Close to the entrance is my packing station, consisting of a simple table I got from Amazon where I added a very practical IKEA pegboard. On top here I keep my gift, paper rolls and different buckets holding cellophane bags, little tissue paper, plastic bags, small bags in different colors. By the way, you can find all tools and equipment in the description of this video. Shrink wrap, my soap wrapping tool and my business cards. I keep my heat gun in a heavy bowl for safety. A heavy duty tape dispenser to pack orders and different types of scissors here are the usual suspects. Then I have shrink wrap bags ready in little glasses as well as sealable bags for samples, rubbing alcohol, I keep such bottles everywhere. This is a three-dimension ruler I got from the post office to measure the thickness of the package. On the pegboard I keep the most used gift ribbons so I don't have to pull them out of a box when needed. The IKEA pegboard has many hooks and features that you can customize according to your needs. Here are some tapes and labels. I keep a calculator, some double-sided tape and a glue mouse. Here's a little waste basket, very practical. A scale for weighing packages and a self-healing mat with measurement markings. This is very useful when you need to cut paper and very heat resistant as well if you need to shrink wrap. Down here is a large drawer where I keep different types of tissue papers that I use to add to gift boxes or parcels. Very easy to see what you have at hand and it's amazing how adding a tissue paper to a box can immediately elevate the look in a very cost-effective way. Down here I keep big boxes, one with sturdy gift boxes. Another one with paper shreds and packing peanuts. And over here more bubble wrap and stuffing material. Another thing I love are these see-through toolboxes. It's very easy to put in small things that belong together and you can keep a nice overview and perfectly store it. Next to the table I have a shelf with a little box system holding more shrink wrap bags and shrink bags for lip balm tubes as well. Some paper bags and then here are some samples or little gifts that I can include in orders. 
These are gift boxes that I ordered from Amazon, super cute and practical to store. Other paper bags and bakery boxes. And here are some crafty things, including my We Are Memory Keepers punch board that can be used to make different types of envelopes and gift boxes, pillow boxes and whatnot. Absolutely love them and I have them all and even a little pack maker. Here are some other crafty materials like stamps, stickers, pliers, punches and so forth. And my brand stamp from No Issue that I really like. Over here, still near my packing station, I keep different labels for my products in this organizing system. Nearby, my soap workbook that I designed to help me keep track of all the soaping sessions. It's available on Amazon if you want to get your own copy. Here I have a collection of design paper that I use to make gift boxes and similar projects. They have different patterns and colors, and I have different styles for Christmas, Valentine's Day, and so forth, so you can have something fitting for each occasion. This is the We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard if you need to trim or cut your paper. Also very easy to store. Then here more drawers where I keep free spaces always and then I have small format design paper and then more gift boxes. These ones here look like a little McDonald's Happy Meal box. In this organizing system down here I keep labels for shipping, thank you labels, shipping information and black paper. Again, in see-through containers, I have some additional decoration material for gift boxes, such like ribbons or bows. On top of the shelf, I keep my big measuring jugs, 5 liters and 3 liters, some stainless steel bowls for mixing, and some trays that I always use to place my projects on so I can easily move it around. Here I keep small embed molds and cupcake liners that I need more often. One trick, by the way, is to keep things you need frequently more in your vicinity, while other less used material can be stored further away. Small wooden sticks and embeds over here. The rest of this row are silicone molds for my standard soaps that I use relatively often. Here are one liter measuring jugs and funnel pitchers beeswax and cutting boards that I always keep at hand. And now here is the giant version of the see-through toolbox that I keep here for an upcoming project. I have such toolbox at home also and they are so extremely practical for me. Here is a container filled with different spices, herbs and dried flowers. Some I use for infusions, some as a natural colorant. And here are the reserves for micas and pigments. They come in such bags, but I will show you later on what I do with it so that it is more practical to use. Up here I keep rubbing alcohol, emulsifiers, witch hazel and different types of extracts. Further we have coffee powder, bentonite clay, walnut shell powder and tapioca starch. Here are some sugars, brown sugar, white sugar, oatmeal and ground oatmeal. And finally different types of salts, pink Himalayan salt, dead sea salt, coarse pink salt and normal sea salt. Moving over to this shelf here is another mixing container that I absolutely love when I'm making double loaves for example. Here I keep sifters, goggles, tea strainers and such. Down here are some Additives like poppy seeds, liquid bath bomb colorants and activated charcoal. And the next levels are all fragrance oils. Here is some clear melt and pour. I like to recycle material, for example these buckets here are super practical and great to store material as you saw before. 
Here I mainly keep my essential oils all lined up. And then glitter organized in salt and pepper shakers for easy use. And then I try to keep the colorants, micas and pigments organized by color also in a see-through plastic jar. Here is my filming table that you might recognize from the YouTube videos. I have two forex surfaces, one black and one white for a different kind of background. This is a super practical surface, easy to clean and doesn't stain at all. Just like a hairdresser, I like to keep my stick blender and hand mixer on this little cart here, as I can move it around when I make a project. Here are more molds that I use less frequently. And in this drawer as well. Molds are a big problem. You never have enough and they pile up quickly. Over here I keep the oils I frequently need in manageable smaller bottles and within some containers to keep the surface clean and relatively orderly. A bucket with different sizes of spatulas and spoon at hand and my hand cream manual filling machine that I absolutely love. This is a display with my recipes. The members of my Buy Me A Coffee page have free access to these and can download it on their computer for their own use. I like to laminate them so they stay clean and dry, so to speak. I also keep kitchen roll paper on a dispenser like this, so I can easily use it. My soap curing rack is right next, with a dehumidifier always in use. This is a game changer, especially in summer. Then there is a big cupboard where I keep glass containers and material that I don't use very often, as well as all my glass measuring cups. Down here are reserve kitchen rolls and empty melt and pour buckets, always very practical to have. The more you use boxes and less mess you end up having in my experience. Small molds and extra ingredients over here. At the bottom I keep citric acid and baking soda. Here is the cooking station with my double boilers and where I keep all my lip balm making material as well as piping stuff. Piping tips are stored in a see-through toolbox as well. I find this really practical. I can see at once what I have and store it comfortably. These are lip balm tubes and a lip balm pouring tray to make 50 lip balms at once. I also have a video here on my channel if you're interested to see. Here are some additional tools like a milk frother, some ice cream scoops and an apple corer, dish soap, and then on top I have some sturdy piping bags and then anti flavor oils for lip balm making. Funnels to refill bottles also. Underneath I have cleaning supplies, a fridge and a freezer to store things that need to be refrigerated or cooled. You have basically seen everything, and if you're interested in other soap-related videos, you can find an entire playlist here on the screen. Feel free to subscribe, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye!